Okay, we got a question from Tom, and Tom asks us, I have heard you often talk about deadlift variations you recommend for easy strength, snatch grip deadlifts, rack pulls. Um, I also like thick bar deadlifts. Uh, there's, there's, there's quite a few. I, I tried deficit deadlifts. Uh, Brett Contreras recommended them. Um, done correctly, I think you can get away with that, okay? However, I've never heard you comment on the RDL or stiff leg deadlift as a suitable variation. Okay, I remember being at uh, a high school, Judge Memorial, and one of our coaches came back from a workshop, and all he talked about was the Romanian deadlift, the RDL, the Romanian deadlift. That's the only answer. And then that year, I watched how he coached it, and it was just brutal watching uh, the athletes were starting. <laughs> it wasn't good. They, I believe the RDL, RDL should start in the up position. You slide down. It's a hinge. You slide back up. You clear the knee and you slide back up. They were doing them from the floor, and it looked, I mean, the kids' knees were caving in. There was no tension on the hamstrings. <laughs> All the load was in their lower and mid back. It was, it was not good. And then you also ask on this uh, variation, the stiff leg deadlift. And uh, so my knock on the stiff leg is that a lot of times we are just uh, throwing all the load into that lower back. Um, I think the stiff leg deadlift, I've always thought the stiff leg deadlift was a great compliment to the front squat because this is what Robbie Robinson told me one time when I was talking to him. Front squat and, and, and he would do heavy sets and then he would do a complimentary uh, straight leg, stiff leg deadlift with it after to keep the pump going. And he focused on getting into his hamstrings. Um, you know, this is one of the classic, your mileage may vary. Not everyone's <laughs> Robbie Robinson. Um, what are your thoughts on these variations as viable options for easy strength, positives or negatives? Uh, the positives are they're, they're both really outstanding exercises. Okay. That's a positive, positive. The negative, done poorly, they're terrible. And that's, uh, so I always worry about a U-curve when it comes to things. Uh, I was having a conversation uh, the other day about this this place a lot of people go to, and, and what you hear from people is it's the greatest or it's the worst. You don't ever get a medium from it. And that is something that always uh, kind of uh, gets my alarm bells going uh, as, a, uh, as a consumer. But it also gets my alarm bells going as a coach. If it's the greatest exercise ever and it's just atrocious, uh, I worry. I like exercises that have a little bit of a kind of a flatness to them, you know. Uh, yeah, some people like them. Yeah, some people don't. But yeah, most people get, yeah, I like that. Yeah, kind of. So my, my knock on those is the, yeah. Tom continues, I am leaning, <laughs> leaning, uh, what the stiff leg deadlift does. It's kind of a joke. I am leaning towards the stiff leg as an option for my next easy strength phase, mostly because I find it slightly more comfortable, seem to recover better, and just enjoy it more. Well, let's see if we can work with this. Um, let's do this. If you're lifting five days a week, why don't you why don't you do a, another variation, uh, uh, something high, like a rack deadlift, and like uh, week one, do the uh, stiff leg, straight leg deadlift one time. Week two, try it twice. Week three, try it three times. And then step back and say, okay. But give yourself a couple of weeks of, of, of adding it in to the mix before you go all the way over. And the only reason, um, anytime you're working with the spine in some of those uh, positions, it's like any kind of rotation movement. You know, when you, when you mess with the spine, you know, it it's it, recovery becomes an issue. So... Let's try that. Oh, okay. And then there's a, Tom has a final question. Finally, I appreciate the squat is king for mass building. And I talk about that a lot in my new book, the Easy Strength Omni book, because, and, and I have some theories about why I think that's true. Never left, nevertheless, if squatting wasn't an option, I am curious on your thoughts on deadlifts generally for mass building in place of the squat. Um, If I would have done my whole career just deadlifting and pressing, I think I'd probably thrown the discus as far. Uh, a snatch clean, you know, n no squatting at all. 
but I don't know if I would have had the size. So it's an interesting question for mass building. Um, it's, it's strange because, you know, a lot of people are giving me some feedback that handstand push-ups and high rep squats are the two best combination for mass building. I keep going handstand push-ups, but in the handstand, you sort of take the grip out of it. Yeah. I mean, you're holding the ground, but you're not squeezing a bar like you do. And it seems to allow some people to build more mass because you're not using all that grip strength. And if you look at homoculus man, you'll notice that, you know, the eyes are huge, the hands are huge and the feet are huge. So there's a lot of nervous, uh, nerve endings in those areas, your body. And yeah, could you get, could you get massive on the deadlift? Uh, when you look at some of the greatest deadlifters in history, when you see them in normal clothes, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm ex you pull Hugh Cassidy out of the way, Kaz out of the way, maybe Terry Todd at his height. But most great deadlifters don't look very, I mean, they don't look freakishly impressive in street clothes. So my answer is, I don't know, but I'm leaning to, it's a great strength exercise, but not a great mass builder. I'm willing to be proved wrong because I think it's a great question. Okay, thank you.